Welcome to Classic Cinephiles with Melissa Tag. I am Clay Morgan. This is episode number six. Now, this is technically like season number two, right? Yeah, totally. We got started, and we just, you know, the the network ordered up a second season, <laughs> and now we finally, <laughs> after months of pre-production, are ready to get started. We're looking forward to getting back to talking about some classic movies here in the coming months. And we are going to start off now with Rio Bravo. We haven't done a Western yet. Uh, and I have to say, I had not seen this one, and you told me to watch it, and I am glad that you did. I'm glad I did, too, because seriously, Rio Bravo is a Western not to be missed. It's good. I mean, it's really, really good. It is. I first watched Rio Bravo. Um, when I, I, I was never that into Westerns, but a friend and I, for whatever reason, decided to watch a ton of them in a row, and we were mainly kind of making fun of them. But then we saw this one, and I was mesmerized by it. I loved it. Okay, so let's talk about the setup before you tell me why you loved it so much. Okay. Rio Bravo is the story of a town. What town? Do we know? A Western town. A town. <laughs> and um, the main character is a sheriff, John T. Chance. Played yes. by the one and only John Wayne. From Iowa. Is he? Yeah, Winterset, Iowa. Actually, I don't know that I had ever seen a John Wayne film all the way through. For as famous as he is, and for all the movies he made. That's bad. He made like over hundred or like over two hundred movies. Over two hundred no, movies. Yes, he totally did. He made He did not make over two hundred and fifty movies. He did. He did. He did. He totally did. Iowans exaggerate. He's, no, we don't. Next you're going to tell he me he was eight <laughs> foot tall. He was six foot three. <laughs> it's well documented. I was six foot three. Oh, we're the same height as John Wayne. I know. We're basically related. <laughs> you're like brothers. Okay. So okay, back to the movie. <laughs> Sheriff, Sheriff uh, John T. Chance uh, is having a problem in this town as they come up against some bad guys. And he's got a deputy named Stumpy, who we'll talk about. Yeah. Oh, Stumpy! <laughs> nice, Walter Brennan. And, and that's right. And uh, of course, the alcoholic struggling to overcome his demons, uh, deputy dude, the original dude, long before the Big Lebowski. Yeah. Yes. And um, <laughs> and I like this movie better than Big Lebowski. Is uh, played by Dean Martin. And the love mm -hmm. interest in the film, and by the way, we're going to talk about this in a minute. <laughs> I didn't know who she was going to be the love interest of. I know. Like, yeah. I didn't know. So it ends up uh, <laughs> she is the love interest of John Wayne, and her name is yeah. Angie Dickinson, playing a character called Feathers. Yes. And uh, the whole movie starts when uh, the bad guy is thrown into jail, and his brother and the other bad guys want to get him out. And they've got the town cut off. So John Wayne is basically stuck with what one man calls a drunk and a cripple to hold down the fort until the U.S. Cavalry can get there like a week later. Yes. Now, Melissa Tag. Yes. <laughs> tell me why you love Rio Bravo. I, well, there's so much to love. But, okay, the biggest thing that I love about Rio Bravo is Dean Martin. And I'm not actually a huge Dean Martin fan. I, okay. As a kid, I loved Jerry Lewis and Dean Martin movies. And then I saw this made-for-TV movie once in it, and Dean Martin was portrayed as really mean in it, so I decided I didn't like him. But that then I it. saw this movie. That was it. I was done with him. But then I saw this movie, and he gives, like, the most amazing performance as – an alcoholic, and he's trying to get over, like, a girl, I think, and so he's just been drunk for years, and the movie starts out with him actually um, in a saloon, and he's just being totally harassed by people, and he's in such a horribly depressed state, and he just, oh, he tugs on your heart so much, and his desperation is so great. You can tell through the whole movie there's just this desperation to change and to do something worthwhile and to... And so you kind of get to see him go through withdrawal, actually, throughout the movie. And yeah. Yeah. I could gush about his performance forever because he just did amazing. And a lot of people said the reason he did so well in this movie is because, in real life, he was an alcoholic. So oh, he, okay. could, he could kind of give a pretty natural performance. It's interesting. But, and, and I definitely found myself rooting for him, right? The, mm -hmm. it, it was very subtle. Like, I'm just kind of, like, motoring along. The movie's on. And, mm -hmm. and when he's struggling... John Wayne, 
what I realized about him is he's such a strong actor that he just stands and doesn't talk, and his presence mm-hmm. is so powerful. And there yeah. were moments where he's basically throwing the choice out for Dean Martin's character, dude. Mm-hmm. And yeah, when, you, totally. when you watch Wayne contemplating it, and you see, like, you're really rooting for <laughs> for a dude to, like, not go back on the bottle. Right. And I have never seen an older movie where I felt like that on that issue, or like you said, you can actually mm-hmm. see the, the shakes, and, like, they're kind of taking yep. on the issue. Howard Hawks, yeah. the director, who you happen to be a big fan of. I am a big fan of. Howard Hawks um, <laughs> knew that Dean Martin was dying to do this movie. Yeah. And the story goes that Martin came to him and said, I really want to do this character. And Howard Hawks said, well, what does a drunk like look like? Go mm-hmm. dress up. So Dean Martin came back, and he was kind of like done up in the Western gear, but he kind of looked nice. He had like some clothes that were together. And Howard Hawks said, no drunk <laughs> I've ever known looks like that. And Dean Martin said, are you going to be here for a couple more hours? He said, yes. So Martin went, and he came back, and then he showed up in the outfit that we see him in the movie. Really? I don't know and, that. And he, he was, like, creating that character as he was getting wow. the part. So I thought that was interesting. That's a cool fact. I didn't know that. Cool facts. Cool facts. <laughs> That's what we exist for. Yeah, Howard Hawks died in 1977, so that interview that he was given must have been in the 70s if, if I saw it. Mm. Now, also in this movie is a young, sharp-shooting stud named Colorado, yeah. and it played by the legendary Ricky Nelson. Yeah, who, he was who, like yeah, he was like 18 years old in the movie, yeah. or 17 or something. He was uh, the Nelsons on TV, right? Ozzy and Harriet, I think, was the show, and uh, he was a singer. He actually looks like Elvis. I get a very strong Elvis vibe uh, from yeah. Ricky Nelson. Yeah, he's basically copying Elvis a little bit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Uh, don't get me started. Elvis is the one and only. Um, but Ricky Nelson <laughs> does a good job. Yeah. I think that I read, or maybe this was in the special features on the DVD, but anyway, they weren't so sure about casting him. Or I think Howard Hawks wasn't really keen on the idea of having him in the movie, but the pro- the production company or the studio was like, dude, he's going to make us money. So he actually has hardly any lines in the movie because Howard Hawks didn't really have a lot of confidence in his acting ability, but yet they're like, he he brought in the people to see this movie. There's a really great scene, too, where Ricky Nelson sings with Dean Martin, and yeah. it, I, it makes me laugh every time I watch it, because you're, you're watching this dramatic Western. They're worried about right. bad guys doing bad things, and all of a sudden they break into song in the jail, and it's really funny to me. Passing away it. the hours one night. I, yeah. I did not expect that. <laughs> You know, and, John Wayne, and John Wayne is just off to the side smiling yeah. while he does in that scene. I love it's it. Not, it's not clunky, though. It kind of fits no. well enough, which is very unusual because yeah. you're usually watching a musical or you're not. Um, right. And they, they clearly created musical scenes because of Ricky Nelson and Dean Martin. But it, right. it kind of worked. And, and I think one yeah. of the reasons it worked is because music is a powerful part of the storyline. Yes. Because the bad guy has the band play that song over and over, which mm-hmm. basically is supposed to be the song that the Mexicans played at the Alamo, meaning there would be no quarter, right? Right, right. Um, music becomes a, a real force in the film, and uh, they said that it actually inspired later on my favorite westerns, the the um, spaghetti westerns, the good, the bad, mm-hmm. and the ugly, uh, you know, those mm-hmm. those famous scores. Yeah, um, yeah. So it was... It was Good. Ricky Nelson, uh, by the way, he he died in 1985. I don't know if, if you're up on really? Ricky Nelson. I don't know. He died <laughs> in a plane know. crash. Really? Yeah, he was What's a singer. What's the deal with singers dying in plane crashes? This was like a fire that started on the plane in the air, and they made an emergency landing, and it was oh. New, Year's, New Year's Eve, and two of the nine people on the little plane survived. Um, Sad. But here's the thing. When I was a kid, there was hair metal was big, and there was this band oh. called Nelson, and the two blonde, long-haired twins, Matthew and Gunnar mm-hmm. Nelson, were like super hot for one year. They had one <laughs> hit, and that's like Hanson. Yeah, well, kind of. But that's <laughs> okay. R- Ricky Nelson is their dad. So if, if you've ever heard of Nelson, oh. Ricky Nelson's their dad. Okay, let's talk about that. talk about Walter Brennan. Yeah, he's so good. He is good. 
A couple times in the movie, his character annoys me because he's so shrill when he talks. But his character is hilarious. Walter Brennan, yeah. one of only three men, to three people, to win three Oscars. Really? Only yeah. three people have... Oh. For Don't acting. quiz me on who the other two are. <laughs> Jack Nicholson and Daniel Day-Lewis. Oh. Walter Brennan oh, won Walter three... Brennan. He won three Best Supporting Actor Awards all in four years. How crazy Whoa. is that? Like Whoa. He was just, boom, Do you boom, know boom. what movies he won them for? Uh, I'd have to look him up again. Oh, okay. I know he was nominated again for a fourth one in Sergeant York in 1941, mm -hmm. and he did not okay. win. And okay. he was never nominated again. Huh. So why else do you like the movie? Why should people watch the movie? Well, it's pretty entertaining to watch John Wayne have a romantic storyline with Angie Dickinson. There's like <laughs> 25, 26 years between them. But yet, I mean, it's it's fun to watch, even though in your head you're kind of like, seriously? Yeah. You've got, you've got Ricky Nelson or you've got Dean Martin and John Wayne is the one you're pairing her with? But okay. Right. And she, Angie Dickinson was totally new as an actress then. She wasn't hugely well-known yet. So she's, she's kind of beautiful. unpolished. Yeah, and she's hilarious. I love her role. So yeah. she like, yeah. She's kind of ditzy almost. But yeah, I think it's really funny to have hyperspastic characters opposite John Wayne. Yeah. And that is definitely John, worth it. And he just kind of goes with it. He's like, oh, well, this girl's in my life now. <laughs> I enjoyed that. But. And there's there's one more really funny scene that stands out. John Wayne is talking to Stumpy, and he's like the old prospector, <laughs> like, well, get, you, yeah. get your guns and get out of here. That's just, it's really and, good. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> there's a scene where John Wayne, he's like, Stumpy, do you think you're not appreciated? I just want you to know that you are. And then Stumpy's kind of sitting there taking off his hat, starting to smile a little bit, feel like he's wanted. And John Wayne says, I love you, or something. Bends down, kisses him on the head, and runs out. <laughs> I was like, whoa, John, awesome. John Wayne doing, like, super comedy. That was I so know. weird. I just it never makes pictured you, him. It makes you wonder if that was scripted or not, you know? I don't know. It seems like well, it Well, if it really wasn't, on. Walter Brennan sure reacted well. <laughs> Walter Brennan also has one of the more like subtly emotional scenes but where he accidentally shoots at somebody and he gets all angry about it but you can tell he, he just does a fabulous job acting of mm -hmm. he's so upset because he just about accidentally shot somebody and yet he's pretending to be angry and that it's the other person's fault and that to yeah. me this whole movie I just I just love the emotion of it in the midst of a western it's oh, it's really great you get the strong sense that that scene and a few others, there's no way it's fully scripted. That yeah. there's probably a lot of, there's a good working relationship between Hawks and the actors, and they really created, mm -hmm. I think, definitely for my money, one of the best Westerns ever. Um, mm -hmm. not, not that I've seen a whole heck of a lot of Westerns, <laughs> but I know which ones are good, and this one is certainly up there. Yeah. So yeah. the movie did well. It earned a few million bucks back in 1959. That was pretty sweet cash. And, of mm -hmm. course... Um, John Wayne went on to continue his run as a Hollywood legend. One last note, there was a character mm -hmm. in the film for about half of it. His, the actor's name was Ward Bond. And Ward Bond mm -hmm. played Bert, the cop, in It's a Wonderful Life. Really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't catch that. Now I need to go back and you watch it. And Ward Bond, I learned, was in 27 movies or something like that with John Wayne. Whoa. The year after the film wow. released, he died of a heart attack. And John Wayne yeah. gave the eulogy at his funeral. Oh, that's sweet. That's nice. So go watch <laughs> Rio Bravo. Watch Ward Vaughn's last film. Yeah. And, and you've got to oh. see this crazy cast uh, chemistry. Yeah, and it's the last film in which John Wayne wears the same hat that he wears in every movie from Stagecoach, which is kind of his first well-known movie up through this movie. He wears the same hat. So this is the last one he wears that one in. That is, and, and that so, hat should be in the Smithsonian. Probably, I don't know where it is. And I'm gonna have to check, so, fact check you, fact checked, fact check you. Fact, fact check. In fact, me and Melissa are both trying to like scramble on book projects, <laughs> so we can't talk. A lot. So, fact check the number of films that John Wayne was in. 
It's totally over 250. I'm sure of it. There's no I way. Think. There's no I, way. I am positive. <laughs> he didn't even do. He couldn't even do 250 commercials. He did. He did a ton of movies. Although, although you'd have to factor in, he was a props guy first. So if he was just a props guy for a movie, does that count? And but see, he was in tons of B movies first, and then he transitioned. And yeah, I, I, I just don't buy it. Not even for that age a lot of Hollywood. Of a lot. Now you're already doubling. You're already hedging your bet. <laughs> I just am really hurt that you don't trust my John Wayne knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I trust you. Just I think you're wrong. <laughs> but it's okay because Melissa has a new book coming out like any minute now. So be sure yeah. to check out Melissa's brand new book. The title of it is. Made to last. Made to last. Yay. And uh, it, it is it is probably a story that John Wayne and Angie Dickinson could have played opposite each other. <laughs> <laughs> Some things would have had to change about it a little bit. But, yeah. <laughs> I no. but I'm very proud of you. We've taken a few months Thank off you. doing these, and you've been hustling. So Thank you. Best to you on your book launch, and we will be back with another movie next time. So go see Rio Bravo. Let us know if you have seen it, what you think. And uh, what other facts do you know? And who's right, Melissa or I, on the movies? <laughs> I'm totally going to be proven right. But...